Hey gang, just wanted to check in with some uh, interesting things I'm checking out in the cryptocurrencies markets. Um, happy Friday, by the way, July 1st before a long weekend. It's always class for celebration. Um, so let's get started right away. Uh, what, what we have here is a chart of the uh, Bitcoin US dollar cross um, on Bitstamp. And I like to use that particular exchange because it has a lot of volume. Um, and what I wanted to point out was that the Bitcoin market has been been acting uh, very, very well. It's been behaving well uh, in terms of technical analysis. And as we can see here, it's pretty much stayed within these channels. And this is a, this is a Fibonacci fan used the trough and the peak uh, to set the parameters. And you can see other than this part right here, where that was really a dangerous time because you did have some candles that uh, that closed. I'm looking. But by the way, I'm looking at a four-hour chart. Um, you have some candles that closed below the uh, the line right here. So that was pretty dangerous. Um, but other than that, we popped right back up, um, and it's been staying in this channel ever since. You can also see that. Here on the bottom edge of, the, of this channel, um, it's acted as really good support, and and just coincidentally, that has also been the 200-day uh, moving average on a four-hour chart um, that's kind of provided that support there. And on the upper end, this is the 100-day uh, chart. Pardon me, 100-day uh, moving average, and that's kind of pro providing a little bit of resistance. So it's just behaving really well, and you know I really like analyzing Bitcoin because other than uh, unlike a lot of the other capital markets, uh, equities and, and uh, currencies, it's really not so much manipulated. Um, with equities, I, I can't tell you how many times I've seen uh, the futures really, really mess with the technical analysis. So like whenever overnight when everyone's sleeping, it's relatively simple to, to put in some futures orders um, and just completely throw off the chart. So it's really hard to do sound technical analysis uh, on more traditional markets. But with Bitcoin, of course, it's uh, open 24 hours a day. And uh, there's, as far as we know, relatively little government intervention. So it's it's nice to, to see from a technical analysis standpoint. Um, I wanted to show you, oh, and just uh, on this as well, uh, looking at the, the MACD oscillator, we're still in positive territory. Uh, it's not, not too oversold. So it, it looks good. We have, uh, you know, declining volume here. So that's, you know, we're kind of in a consolidation phase, I would say. But I want to show you this other chart that's very interesting and, and I think kind of actionable. And bear with me, I'm still learning how to use uh, Camtasia. There we go. Okay, so this is an hour, same, same exchange, uh, bits down, just a different software package. Uh, this is the again Bitcoin dollar cross uh, with an hour. We're using hour long candles, and you can see a really, really well defined bull flag here. And uh, I mean, this is just classic. There's a couple of rules that, that go along with using the bull flag as a uh, as an indicator. Um, it has to be an extension of of a trend. So we've we've kind of got this uptrend here, and that should uh, satisfy that, that demand. Um, also, volume is really, really important. And we, we, we see some increasing volume here. Now, how these work, if you're not familiar with um, this, is it's just a way of kind of, well, the way I use it is to define risk. Um, what we generally see, and let me back up. I've actually seen a lot of bull flags lately um, in the Bitcoin market, and they, they tend to work out. Um, of course, nothing's guaranteed. This is just a tool to use for uh, trading decisions and how I like to use it as uh, as a way to manage risk. And so what we, how it usually works is you take the distance of the flagpole, which in this case is around 630 to 680, giving us about $50 worth of, uh, uh, worth of price. And that's going to be the fuel. So once we break above this line convincingly with volume and on a closing basis, so just an interesting story about how this can go wrong if you get too eager. You see this candle here? 
I actually did this video, uh, you know, about an hour ago, and um, I made a mistake. I didn't show the, the price here, so I'm just doing it over. But during that time, it was really threatening to bust out here because we had the, the volume and it was it was over uh, the top portion of the flag. But you always have to wait till the closing uh, till a candle, a closing candle, um, because exactly what happens it it tends to to want to stay in that pattern. So um, make sure that that you have a, a candle that closes above your marker and it has to be on increased volume. If it didn't have a lot of volume or increased volume, I would not really trust it. Um, volume is everything when you're doing technical analysis. But um, I expect this to work out uh, just because they have been lately and it's just set up perfectly. Um, what this should take us is uh, we've added $50 on the 680 that would put us what at 720. So uh, if the if the flag plays out, that should put us at about 720 um, in in the Bitcoin market, which would be a, a really nice rally. And from a fundamental perspective too, I would I would add um, to to that thesis that the last time we had a really big breakout was um, the last holiday. I think people tend to trade more cryptos when you know they're not working or something. Um, that's just my theory. So the last uh, what was it Veterans Day? Um, we had a big breakout then, um, so that we could could have that going into the long weekend here. That could add fuel. Um, you know, it's hard to tell exactly why this is happening, but you know, again, these are just tools. Um, I'm gonna gonna check out uh, the Dash market. Give me just one second. Okay, I'm back. Sorry for that uh, that abrupt change there. I'm still learning the Camtasia software. Um, this is the Dash Bitcoin cross on Poloniex, which is you know, by far the the biggest volume out there. So um, it's the one we use because that gives us better signals. Uh, I'm just going to show you. Oops. There's that the symbol, and I'll put it back because I want you to be able to see the price. Okay, so um, I drew up this chart. Uh, using uh, the Fibonacci fans again and with with Dash Bitcoin if you were to look at this just right here it looks like it's in a, a longer term uh, downtrend but that's actually not the case that's I would say an intermediate uh, downtrend and we can see that a lot better when we zoom back here and uh, I use this as the trough and over here as the peak and what we see is it is actually in a long-term uptrend. And uh, I'm going to zoom back in here. This is pro there's a couple of things that are going on here. One is the uh, 0.25 uh, Fibonacci resistance arc is in play here. It's acted as really strong uh, support here. And so after you bounce off here, this is the uh, 382. Fibonacci uh, resistance line, and it's kind of congregating around there. It, it's like stuck there. So for several days, several weeks, it's been kind of hanging out here. Um, so that's one thing. And I'm also seeing this intermediate trend line down here. If you were to break this with uh, to the upside on a closing basis with some volume, um, that would be really good news for this market. Um, I, I'm a little leery of that because Bitcoin is so strong right now, um, so we got to factor that in. But just from a technical perspective, that's what I'm, I'm seeing here. If you're going to play this market, um, it's not it's not so bad because you have a lot of defined risk here. If you were to go long at this point, um, you could set a stop just below this area, I don't, I don't know, the 0.25 uh, Fibonacci arc, and you know that's about. What is that? 0 0.00928, somewhere around there on a closing basis. That could be your defined risk because, as you can see, going back almost for the life of the contract, way back to November, it's never really, other than here, uh, spent too much time down there. So that's a really good uh, a good indicator for risk. Also, you could wait. Um, this is probably what I would do if if, if I was trading this. Is um, I would wait for the break. Of this, wait for it on a closing basis. So it would have to have, we'd have to have the break. It have to be on a closing basis, and it would have to have volume. 
at that point you could place a buy you can go long and then uh, you can set the stop below this this uh, this uh, trend line and uh, you know that's it's real simple these are really simple trading techniques but they work um, always define your risk and you know how much you could potentially lose and then uh, and then your next biggest problem is when to sell but that's uh, for another video. Thanks for joining me, guys. My name is Aaron, Aaron Casillas, and uh, yeah, hope you have a great weekend.